SpaceX began dismantling B-18 immediately after the incident, and early work on B-19 now appears to be underway. The rapid pace of activity is expected to continue. At the same time, though, upgrades to both launch pads are still moving forward with steady progress. Meanwhile, SpaceX has completed its 150th Falcon 9 launch of the year, bringing the company closer than ever to its planned goals. In addition, NASA has reported new progress on the Artemis II spacecraft, marking another important step toward the mission. Let's explore all these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The recent Booster 18 incident has certainly slowed SpaceX's momentum, although a slowdown does not mean a halt. In fact, the response from the team shows a determined push to recover and move forward with even greater focus. Once engineers assessed the condition of B-18, it became clear that the vehicle could no longer support future Starship operations. Its remaining value is the data that it can provide, which will help guide improvements in the next generation of prototypes. After confirming that the site was safe, SpaceX moved quickly by the afternoon of November 21st, a large crane arrived at the Massey facility. The crane was positioned to support teams working on the damaged booster beginning the morning of November 22nd. By the afternoon of the same day, the first major cutting operations were underway. The initial cut showed that SpaceX chose to separate the booster into two main sections, which were the liquid oxygen tank and the methane tank. This approach likely served two purposes. The first purpose was to simplify the analysis of each section. The second purpose was to account for the different levels of post-incident damage. By the end of the day, both sections had been fully separated. Once the booster was split, the dismantling continued with more precision. The methane tank was divided into three smaller pieces. Although the exact intent is unknown, one possibility is that the forward region near the hot staging hardware suffered the least damage. If that is correct, SpaceX may preserve that portion for reference during the construction of future prototypes, while removing the sections that were more heavily deformed. Time will reveal whether this assumption holds true. The liquid oxygen tank showed more severe damage, yet interestingly, it did not appear to be cut further. Instead, workers were seen welding on the tank dome on the morning of November 23rd. Many observers believe that temporary lifting points were being added. This would make sense because the original lifting hardware was located on the forward section of the booster. Once the methane tank was removed, the liquid oxygen section no longer had a proper lifting location. The added welds likely prepared the tank for safe transport and inspection. Even with the setback, the recovery pace from the SpaceX team has remained remarkably fast. The rapid dismantling, the clear workflow, and the continued attention to analysis all suggest that lessons will be applied quickly. It's unfortunate to retire B-18 so soon, especially because it represented an ambitious step forward and introduced several key upgrades. However, the moment has passed and the focus must now shift to the future. That future is already beginning to take shape. Early signs indicate that work on B-19 is underway. In the latest update, SpaceX stated that the Starbase team plans to have the next Super Heavy booster fully stacked in December. This timing aligns with the planned test campaign for the first Starship V3 vehicle and the associated ground systems. SpaceX also confirmed that the 12th Starship flight test remains targeted for the first quarter of 2026. Since we're now in the final days of November, stacking for B-19 could happen as early as next week. This suggests that all necessary sections are already prepared inside the Star Factory. For comparison, B-18 required nearly six months to complete, although that timeline was influenced by the introduction of new V-3 upgrades and ongoing launches of the V-2 variant. With additional experience and increased urgency, B-19 may come together far more quickly. A realistic estimate would place completion around early to mid-January of next year. Because the official launch window extends through the entire first quarter of 2026, SpaceX now has greater flexibility. Cryogenic testing and static fires could begin in January or early February. Ship testing could even proceed first since it does not require the main launch pad and the newest ship is already complete and waiting for Massey to finish its cleanup operation. Operations. If everything accelerates smoothly, a February launch for Flight 12 seems plausible. Feel free to share your own predictions 
in the comments. Looking beyond B-19, it's clear that SpaceX will need more prototypes in production. Both booster and ship hardware will be required in larger numbers next year to support a busy flight schedule and to provide backups in case of any unexpected setbacks. For that reason, increased production speed will be essential. If you believe SpaceX should continue to speed things up in the coming months, you can show your support by writing Fast and Furious in the comment section down below. And that covers the vehicle side of development, but what about upgrades taking place across the launch system itself? On Pad 1, SpaceX has continued refining the chopsticks. After trimming the left arm and removing the landing rail, the same process has been applied to the right arm. The landing rail has now been removed there as well, and the arm will likely be shortened in the near future. With these changes, the external modifications to the chopsticks are nearly complete, although many internal upgrades are still needed to support the new vehicle design. These improvements to the chopsticks promise several major benefits. By trimming the arms, the system becomes less bulky and easier to operate, with more room for precise movement. This will be especially important in the future because the chopsticks will not only lift vehicles, but will also be responsible for catching them after flight. The V3-related upgrades will introduce Produce even more significant changes, including new landing rail configurations, improved catching pins, enhanced actuators, and additional refinements that will set the new system apart from the older version. Upgrades are also progressing on Pad 2. After spending several days on adjustment work, the Ship QD, or Quick Disconnect Arm, has now been officially lifted into position and installed on the tower. With this step, all the major systems required for Pad 2 have been placed. Over the next few weeks, final small-scale installations will likely be completed it followed by a full series of tests to confirm readiness. Taking a closer look at the new ship QD on Pad 2 reveals a completely redesigned structure compared to the version on Pad 1. The new arm is supported by a strong steel frame that provides a sturdy foundation. It also features a white enclosed frame that resembles a crew access corridor similar to those used in Florida. Altogether, this design offers far greater stability than the Pad 1 version, which relied on a tube-based structure and several improvised-looking support frames. Those older elements made the Pad 1 QD more vulnerable during launch, especially as Starship rises past it under intense thrust, heat, vibration, and pressure. However, the Pad 2 QD is not perfect. The current setup appears to consist of two fixed segments, which reduces some of the flexibility seen in the earlier design. It's possible that this is only a temporary configuration and that future additions will increase its range of motion. Overall, the upgrades across both launch pads are proving to be just as compelling as the vehicle development itself. It'll be exciting to watch how these systems continue to evolve in the coming weeks. Now, it's time to look at the latest Falcon 9 updates and the new milestone it has achieved. At 2.53 in the morning Eastern on November 22nd, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from SLC-40 in Florida, carrying 29 payloads into orbit. As expected, the mission was successful with all satellites deployed as planned and the booster returning safely to land. What makes this flight especially important is the milestone it represents. This mission marked the 150th Falcon 9 launch of the year, a number that SpaceX proudly highlighted in its post-flight update. It's an extraordinary achievement in modern spaceflight. Many rockets struggle to launch once or twice per year, and reaching 10 flights annually is considered remarkable. Yet SpaceX has turned high-frequency launches into a routine part of its operations. With 150 flights now completed, the company is only 20 launches away from its goal of 170 for the year. There are still a few days left in November and the entire month of December to reach that target. If SpaceX continues at its current pace, they have a real chance of achieving it. We'll just have to see how the final weeks of the year unfold. Now it's time to look at NASA's latest progress with Artemis II hardware. NASA has completed one of the most important steps on the path to returning humans to the moon as the Exploration Ground Systems team successfully lifted and integrated the Orion spacecraft on top of the SLS rocket. The stacking work took place inside High Bay 3 of the VAB at NASA's KSC in Florida. 
This operation marks a significant milestone for the Artemis II mission, which is planned to send astronauts around the moon in early 2026. Artemis II will be the first time humans travel toward the moon since Apollo 17 in 1972. Although the mission will not include a lunar landing, it's essential for proving the performance of the SLS, the Orion, and its life support capabilities as well, Orion, and its life support capabilities, capabilities as well as deep space operational procedures with a crew on board. The astronauts for this mission will be Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, and Christina Koch from NASA, along with Jeremy Hansen from the Canadian Space Agency. Their flight will be the first crewed mission of the entire Artemis program. Artemis II will also follow a hybrid free return trajectory that allows Orion to swing around the moon and then naturally return toward Earth using gravity. This path provides an additional level of safety for an early crewed mission. During the roughly 10-day flight, the astronauts will evaluate life support functions, spacecraft maneuvering, communication systems, and many other essential operations required for future lunar landings. Throughout the mission, Orion will serve as both the transportation vehicle and the living space for the crew. The spacecraft features advanced guidance and navigation systems, improved radiation protection, modern avionics, and a full set of life support technologies designed to operate in deep space. Its heat shield, which is the largest ever built for a crewed spacecraft, will protect the astronauts during re-entry at speeds nearing 25,000 miles per hour. Artemis II is a crucial step toward building a lasting human presence on and around the moon. Its success will help enable the construction of the Gateway Orbital Platform, the development of long-term lunar surface systems, and future preparations for missions to Mars. However, many tasks still remain. NASA must complete extensive hardware evaluations, conduct crew-related tests, and verify that every system is ready for flight. Time is limited, with only a few months remaining before the planned launch date. All eyes are now on NASA as preparations continue. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.